Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a huge discovery in the Diva Curl scandal, and something that I personally found myself, which could be very helpful to you if you were experiencing the same things I was experiencing from Diva Curl. And one of those symptoms was eczema, like really itchy scalp, and literally like my skin felt like it was falling off and I could not stop itching it. I never had a problem with Diva Curl until this last batch that I bought. I actually have the old bottles, which I could not believe I'd had, and I am so thankful that I did, because I was able to go A and B the ingredients and see which ones could be problematic for our hair and our skin. For me, the skin was definitely my most aggravating issue because it literally felt like it was burning every single day and then my curls did relax and that comes obviously secondary to my skin feeling like it's burning but it did also relax my curls this right here is my older diva curl one conditioner the original from years ago because I ran out of product and I bought this at Rite Aid this does not contain phenyl ethanol while this one which is the same product which i bought recently this one contains phenyl ethanol and phenyl ethanol is this new preservative that brands are using to say they don't have parabens in them and when i researched all these different ingredients there were some that were a little troublesome as well but that one just really stood out to me as like oh my god this is what everybody's having an issue with because it was never in their products before and everyone was having all these the skin irritation so it literally says this online about phenyl ethanol and it's gonna blow your mind it says phenyl ethanol has an allergenic potential cases of skin sensitivity the first stage of the onset of the disease resulting in eczema are known they are almost always linked to regular use of cosmetics containing phenyl ethanol i mean I, I can't believe they wouldn't just come out and say like, yeah, we started using this new preservative. It's phenyl ethanol. Literally, it's causing your scalps to bleed. We understand. You can literally quickly Google search that, like AMB the ingredients from an old older bottle and see that. And this is how I figured out that it was still bothering. I literally went to the store after I was like, oh my God, my hair is horrible. Like my hair started relaxing and the eczema was like, I didn't think the eczema was related. I thought it was something different, but the eczema is definitely related because it's pretty much all gone now. How I found it out is I went to the store and I bought other curly hair products. And when I was looking for things, this came and this would have been great. It is Odell and it's the Curl Divining Shampoo and the Conditioner. And literally the ingredients are like minimal there's not much in it and it's vegan not tested on animals dermatologist tested no sulfates no formaldehyde no phthalates no parabens no parabens <laughs> no dyes no synthetic fragrance like literally like all these like bad things are not in it but <laughs> our little phenyl ethanol is in here and i was wondering because then i switched to this and i also switched to these products which is not your mother's curl talk defining cream and the sculpting gel and what do you know it says no sulfates no silicones no alcohol no dyes no parabens no phthalates in either of these products but but guess what it has it has phenol ethanol so literally i can't even believe I'm saying this, but when I switched to this stuff, my skin was going crazier. I was like, how could my skin possibly get itchier? And I didn't originally switch to this. How I knew that there was something bothering me with this is because I first switched to Garnier, which is like a really stripping sulfate shampoo. And then I was using Selsun Blue because I just didn't know what to use. And I know I needed to do something clarifying to get the Diva Curl off my hair. So I was doing that and I was using my Garnier Fructis Curl Scrunch Gel. And I wasn't having any skin reactions with any of that. My hair was like a little drier than normal. I used to use that stuff all the time. So I knew it was fine for my hair. But then I was like, oh my gosh, the curly girl method, I should really take the silicones out because those have silicones and sulfates in it. I should really try to find something that 
can fit with the curly girl method so my curls can look better. So I was thinking I should really try to find products that work for my hair that are gonna be more healthy for my hair. Even though the Garnier was working and it actually, my hair did see improvement while I was using the Garnier but I just thought there was something better. So I switched to these and I was actually very excited about all these products. I actually, in the video, I think when I quit Diva Curl, I talked about these. In the video, how they were affordable, like these were $11.99. I believe these were also in the same price range and that you could get them at your local Target and all that stuff. And oh my gosh, they're just as bad. So. This is all garbage too, like total garbage. It just really frustrates me that these brands are trying to say that they're natural and that they're healthy and good for your hair when they're lit it's literally just marketing. The fact that there are no parabens in their product is literally marketing because they're putting something way worse in it. And not only that, not only just the skin irritation, like that's how I knew about it. It also has like toxic effects on the body. I knew because my skin had a legit reaction, but this can be metabolized into phenoacetic acid, which can lead to neurotoxic effects and neurological disorders, which is completely mind blowing that they would even allow this in a product. And it's all about percentages too. But if it's in one product and it's low on the ingredient list, okay, maybe you wouldn't have any of these side effects and it'd be fine. Or maybe they think you're only using this like not every day and not it's not constantly staying on your hair. But as a brand, you should know that someone is also using the shampoo and the conditioner and the styling products that all have the preservative in it. And it's not just this brand, like, and you're gonna say, well, you know, well, if you bought all the styling products from the one brand, maybe it's not in that. No, it's literally in all products. Like literally, I was looking at these shampoos and conditioners, they have the ingredient in it as well. I don't know, I didn't look at their stylers, but it's in both their shampoo and conditioner. So, and in Diva Curl, it was literally in everything that I was using except for the Archangel Gel. So literally it was in No Poo Original, it was in their One Conditioner, it was in their Styling Cream, and I was using all these products like practically every day. And, you know, it's just unbelievable. Diva Curl is expensive, like why are you putting these ingredients in your products. I'm paying for my hair and my skin and my scalp to feel amazing and look amazing. And you're putting these cheap ingredients in. Like, I'm just like, just to, just for marketing. Like, why don't, why didn't you just like be the bigger brand and like come out and be like, hey, I know everybody's saying like parabens are horrible, but this is our alternative and our alternative is way worse for you. Educate people. I don't understand. They have like a large social media following. To me, it's just like totally not cool. And the fact that they were just able to change the ingredients and have no notice like on it. Hey, new formulation. We were not clued in at all. We were just literally buying a product that we thought was exactly the same. And that, my friends is really crappy. Also, phenyl ethanol belongs to the glycol ethers family and glycol ethers are horrible. They're just bad for you. And a lot of times, a lot of products will say no glycol in them. I don't know if any of these do, do they? They don't, they don't. So they can, I guess, get away with it because they don't actually say it but it's highly toxic to humans. It can cause abnormalities in your menstrual cycle. It could cause sterilization. It's literally really bad. I don't know why these are allowed in our products that we're literally putting on our scalp. It can be absorbed into our bloodstream and our skin and oh my God. I literally can't believe that these are allowed to be in our products and that they can be absorbed through our skin. It's just so scary and it's just made me really, really re the ingredients on all of my hair care and skincare products. I'm not even gonna dive into cosmetics yet because I'm scared, but I will get there eventually. So yeah, guys, I just wanted to come on here and tell you about this ingredient and tell you to avoid that and to really look at your products because it is the new preservative that these companies are using that even claim that they're natural. They don't have parabens, they don't have sulfates, they don't have alcohols, they don't have all this stuff, but they have phenol ethanol. Just be really careful and don't buy into the marketing. Really, really do your research when it comes to your hair care. And I'm not saying that the curly girl method is bad. I'm really not. If we can find products that don't contain these ingredients that can literally like cause neurological problems and 
our scalps to flare. That would be amazing if we can still stick to the curly girl method. I'll make another video about the products I'm using now that don't contain this, but I wanted to put that out there for you right now so you can go through your hair products and if you're still having the scalp irritation that you can get rid of these products and just get rid of them anyway, like neurological problems. And if you're stacking them, ugh, it's just so horrible. In small percentages, it's not bad, but especially if you're refreshing your hair, if it's below the 1% line, but once you're putting more and more and more on your hair, the concentration goes up. And that's just like asking for a disaster. And I feel like these companies should be accountable, especially if their line has a certain percentage that's not safe for the body. And obviously that's the case if you are you're using the no poo and you're not really cleansing it off with a sulfate or a detergent of any kind i just want you guys to stay safe and to keep your scalps healthy keep your bodies healthy so as soon as i figured out this information i wanted to let you guys know i will definitely post my new curly hair routine with products i am using now as far as the relaxing part of the hair these products do have dizinyl urea i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but that was in both formulations, I believe. So that could have been happening over time. Also, something to note too, a lot of us were experiencing relaxing of our curls from the ears all the way around, like the underneath layer. That I think is due to an ingredient called dizinyl urea. It says here online that dizonyl urea is an antimicrobial preservatives used in cosmetics. Dizonyl urea acts as a formaldehyde releaser. Formaldehyde is not good for your curls. Formaldehyde actually can relax your curls, literally a releaser. So literally it'll straighten out your curls and these are curly hair products. So why in the world would they use a preservative like that? And I am not a scientist. I am just going off of information I found, but to be a curly hair brand and to put an ingredient like that in your list just seems out of this world to me even like crazier than the other ingredient because why would you be a curly hair brand trying to relax people's curls when they're coming to you to enhance their curls and i think that ingredient is more of like an overtime one because i didn't notice that when i was using it at first when i was first using the product my hair looked fantastic it looked great and then after using it for a few years, I noticed, oh my God, my hair was thinning more. It was relaxing. So I think over time with that one, it started progressively thinning and straightening out the bottom layer of my hair. And the interesting thing is that ingredient is act activated with heat and I am a dance instructor. So I sweat and the hottest part is like my neck. And it's all, all the hair that was like touching my neck closer to my skin and my body and the top layer is all super curly. So it's just something to note. Obviously, these are all just my opinions and my research, but I wanted to share this information with you just in case you didn't look up the ingredients yourself. I don't even think anyone has shared this information. I haven't read about it online and I really keep track of the Diva Curl scandal because it definitely affected me. I joined the class action lawsuit. Just stay positive and I have some more tips and tricks up my sleeve that I'm gonna be posting about. I have new products I'm using that I'm liking that I will be posting about as well very soon. So stay tuned for that video. But please, please avoid phenyl ethanol and this diazenol urea or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce that one. But yeah, guys, I love you guys so, so much. I hope you are staying safe with all this corona madness going on in the world. I just am praying for you and everyone. I'll be trying to make as many videos so you guys have some more entertainment while you are trying to social distance. On that note, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at at Carolyn Marie X3, and I'll pop that up there. I also have music out and I have an album. And my album is called Carolyn Marie After Me. And it would mean the world to me if you go to Spotify or Apple Music and checked it out. Or you can buy a hard copy on my website at www.carolynmariemusic.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.